In this video, we are going to talk about William Butler Yeats. He is an Irish poet of the best symbolist in the modernist poetry. He was born in Sandy Mountain Country Dublin, Ireland. When we say William Butler Yeats, we mention mysticism, occultism and symbolism. One of his poems is The Second Coming. What was Yeast's concern in The Second Coming? What was the message that he wants to convey to the readers at that time? He was concerned about something historical or about a certain belief that he had about history. This poet has his own theorization or his own concept about history that in a number of years, civilizations come to an end. So, what was his message about? He wants to say something about the modern civilization and the world in general, not the British society or the European society or whatever, it is not a certain country. He was concerned about the world and his view was a big one. He is known for his concern about the unworldly things that are spiritual and unearthly. He formed his own ideas about such things. He left that after certain time when societies or civilizations or people in general get away farther from religion and morals and from such things, things get disintegrated, things get loser and loser, so they get further from the center. That is why he said the center cannot hold. When they get further from morals, religion from doctrines or whatever, that is a sign for him. It is a sign that the end is coming and a new world or a new history start to begin and the new civilization is going to begin. This is his idea in simple words. Why does he think in this way? What influenced his life? He won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1923. He was born in 1865. So, we imagine when he won the prize, he was old enough and he had accomplished so many things in his career as a poet. He was not only a poet, he was a playwright, he was interested in writing plays, directing plays and so on. Why was he concerned about that? Because the time he lived in was when his country Ireland and Britain's relationship was in a kind of unrest. Britain was the colonizer of Ireland. They had a kind of ruling power on Ireland and the Irish people were fighting that kind of power during that time so there was a kind of unrest in his place which is Dublin in Ireland. So, he had that kind of revolutionary sense in his writings and he shows this in his plays as well as in his writings. So, he was an Irish person, but he wrote in English to help conveying his message. Yeats was born in Dublin and studied in London. He was moving to different places. What are the accomplishments he had when he won the prize? He won the prize for, The Countess Kathleen. The Wanderings of Oyeisen and other poems. The Tower. Words for music perhaps and other poems. Let's talk about his earlier life. He began his life as a lawyer. He began his university study as a lawyer, but he left that for another thing that he likes more which is art. So, he left his study and abandoned the law for art because his father was studying his art in London as well. He was in his twenties when he studies art and after sometimes he left art for other things, he left London to other places. When he returned to London, he was interested in directing plays. He met certain people in London. There are two important names that he was influenced by in London, we have Oscar Wilde and George Bernard Shaw. These two names are literary figures from the 19th century, both of them are of Irish origins but they are writing in English. They are very influential and Yeats was influenced by them. He also met someone called Maud Gon. She is the woman that he fell in love with. He proposed her so many times, but she refused. She was a subject of many of his romantic poems. She shared with him the interest in the Irish question. She was kind of advocate for this matter. She defended her country and she was a revolutionary character and son on. So, they shared things. It was not a successful relationship, she refused him many times so that we can see a woman reflected in his romantic writings who is Maud gone. She served as a muse for Yeats for years. A muse means the source for his inspiration. He wrote poetry because he wanted to write something about her for her. There are many poems he dedicated to her, 
but there is a play called The Countess Kathleen he dedicated to her that was published in 1892. Also, at these years when he was in his thirties, he found a kind of a poetry groups or clubs like Rhymer's Club Poetry Group. And we have others. He joined the Order of the Golden Dawn, an organization that is related to the occultism and mysticism. Occultism and mysticism were the reason behind him writing unclear poetry and symbolic poetry. Yeats had that kind of special symbolism, it was not like a usual thing. The symbols and the figures of speech he used were a bit different from other writers. That was because of his interest in occultism and mysticism. Also he was fascinated with otherworldly elements. Otherworldly elements, are things that are not like earthly, things that are not related to real life, things that we cannot see and touch, things that will happen and things that might happen after death. He was thinking of that most of the time. He was not a religious person to that extent, but he had that kind of historical concept about time and the world in general. What is the main thing that influenced his writings? It was his culture. We see mythical elements reflected in his writings. He loved to use such elements in his writings because he is proud of his identity as an Irish person. He likes to represent that in his poetry. His writings are full of such folk tales, things that are originally from his culture. Now what about his early career? As a playwright he had a great accomplishment. His main cause was his country, his main cause was political. His main cause was something different from his poetry in a way similar to it, but not like the plays that he directed and produced during that time. An important name in his life as a playwright we have Lady Gregory, she is a person who worked with him for Irish stage. There is a work called Kathleen Nihulahan, it is the production of their work. His marriage. He married to someone called Georgie Hyde Lees in 1917. The modernist element in Yeats can be found after his marriage. He began to write in a way which is away from the conventional way. He began writing according to the conventional way and as time changes, writers also changed. It was the time of the war and people. He began having that kind of experimental writings. After his marriage, also he had begun that kind of strange views about spiritual world. We can say his ideas about history are formed after his marriage. He has theories of human nature and history. In addition to his political concern as well. This poet won the Nobel Prize in his fifties or. He died in 1939. So, he lived a long life. He was a kind of influential writer during the modern time. The main works that he accomplished during his life were The Wild Swans at Cool, A Vision, The Tower and Words for Music perhaps and other poems. Cool is a park in which he used to stay in and write his poetry in the company of Lady Gregory. He died in France in 1939. The main themes in his writings. Relationship between art and politics. In his youthful years, he was in love with art because of his father and because of the change of his study and son on. He used art to reflect his ideas about political question, the Irish question of his time. Ireland is his national identity. He was always proud of that and he wanted to reflect that kind of negativity of the British rule, this effect of the social life of the social people. From this, we have different poems like Odes. He wrote out of love for the beauty of his country about its culture, about the countryside, about the myth figures and others. The impact of fate and the divine on history. When we say fate, we say historical concept and we say his belief in the otherworldly things the spiritual side of Yeats. What is the meaning of divine? Is it something related to the human abilities or human power or something like this? It is something that is much more than human things. It is the power that is much more than being a human. So, divine is something like holy or something like this. He is not a Christian person in the sense he is a religious person. He rejected Christianity. He believes that there is a certain power in the world, something that determined people's fate and so on. When religion is absent, there should be something that replaces. He used a word to describe the circles of history. It is cycles of history, but for Yeats, 
As a symbol it is a circling symbol. The word is Jaya. The Jaya is the symbol that it can be found in different places in his poems. You can see in the poems the word Jaya, you can see something that is moving in circle, you can see something in nature that is moving in swirling manner. So, once you see that symbol, you understand that he is referring to the cycles of history. Sailing to Byzantium is a long poem and an important one which is related to this theme of divine power, the control of sail power that he refers in his poetry. He did not mention any name or any certain authority like God, but he refers to fate, destiny. He wants to say that things are determined by some power in the world and we can expect what will happen. That is why he had that kind of complex systems of symbols because the systems of his symbols are not easy. They are complex and the images he uses are interlocking like gyres or the spiral cones, particularly in his poem The Second Coming, we have that concept very clearly. The transition from Romanticism to Modernism. He began writing in a conventional way being influenced by Romantic writers like Keats and others. He was writing in that way, but gradually when he influenced by the Romantic writers, he hit his famous lyrical Romantic poems and themes about love for certain person or love for his country or something related to his love for nature and countryside and longing and loss for his country. He wished to stay in his place or country. All these are things that could be considered as Romantic elements. Of course he was writing in a conventional way. He follows the conventions of romantic verse, having like a familiar rhyme scheme, metric patterns and poetic structures. That is for his early poetry. Things became different in the time of the wars. He had his own views, different views and ideas and he had that kind of poetry which is more sophisticated and more modernist in his later life. He began to write about serious subject matters. It is something that can be contrasted to romantic themes, something that can represent serious subjects unlike the romantic subject matters. He began to write about the political cause as well because of the national war in his country and the world war. Please, do not forget to click notification bell, like, share, comment and subscribe my channel.